So I took a signed statement from Pam, put it on tape, sent it to Buck Ravel, number two man in the FBI at the time, who used to work for me in Philadelphia. He was the head of the bank robbery squad. And I told, the, I told Buck and the FBI, I said, you guys, I said, first you try to get me, prosecute me in uh, Dallas. It was right here in Dallas, by the way. Uh, with your investigation, three investigations, and all. I was uh, two days away from being indicted by a grand jury here, by the way. That's another story, and I don't have time to tell it. I said, first you try to get me for, in Dallas, and now you set this girl up on me. I said, you guys are Bush. Now, for you ladies that don't know what that means, that means you're minor league, okay? The guys that know baseball know what that's what it is. So what's, what else has happened to me? Well, I've had surveillances on me uh, galore. I've had people planning on me, probably 18, 20 people planning on me in the last eight, 28 years. I've had burglaries. They've come into my house, even when I'm asleep. Uh, they put a penny on the foot of my bed one night when I was there. Uh, one night I, I went to bed at midnight. I got up at 3 o'clock to relieve myself. My bathrobe when I went to bed was at the foot of my bed. And I got up and here ceremoniously laid out like a rug next to the bed. Uh, I've been a victim of cyber terrorism, threatening phone calls, hidden camera. I came home from a trip here within the last five or six weeks, month, I guess it is. I was looking for a file on the table that I had in my uh, apartment, my house in uh, Claytonia, and I couldn't find it. I was looking through and looking through, and I had a phone call, 827 AM, and a male voice says, did you find the file? They had a camera in there, a hidden camera in there. But they have cameras now that are the size of the end of a pinpoint of a needle. Had threatening phone calls, cyber terrorism, hidden cameras, stole, my car's been stolen. I've, I've, I've had gang stalking on me, lug nuts removed. I've had flat tires. My window's been shot out twice. Both times I was standing near the window. Uh, I have been, had TV surveillance of me. They can monitor you through cable television, by the way, even if it's off. I've had threatening letters, and most recently, I've been the victim of a disinformation program by a guy named Stu Webb and other individuals. And Stu Webb has actually put out word that I was kicked out of the FBI for practicing satanic ceremonies in the federal building. Okay, and you you know what? After that disinformation came out, my speaking tours were, came down to nothing, really. I was doing a lot of lectures before that, and we have enough idiots out there that believe this off the internet because it's on the internet that it really affected my opportunity to get the word out. But this is what they had in mind. It's called a disinformation program. And then the most recent thing, and I'm, I will close in just a minute. I have one minute left, but I was late starting, right? I wasn't? I was, yeah. I was? Okay. Well, I won't argue with you. Huh? Go for it. Go for it. Okay. All right. There's no argument then. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, but uh, the latest thing to me is I moved a year ago last May, excuse me, yeah, a year ago last May, from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I had a, a condominium there. I had uh, next door was somebody I never saw, and across the hall was an individual who was a security guard. And I'm sitting at my desk, and I'm, I, I can't think. I don't know what's happening. I can't read. I can't do it. I realize that, that something's happening to me. Uh, a friend of mine came in about 11.30 at night, said, you're sick, called the paramedic. Paramedics came, took my blood pressure to get to the hospital. I had blood pressure of 242 over 119. And so I knew that there was a serious problem. I had blood tests, and I had arsenic and cyanide in me. I was being poisoned, and I knew this. Within two weeks, I left Las Vegas, called John DeCamp in Claytonia, Nebraska, and I said, John, I'm getting out of here. He said, come on back. I've got a place for you to stay. And I now live in Claytonia, Nebraska, about two blocks from John DeCamp. Anyway, I was being poisoned. And there's other stories about the poison. They've tried to poison me when I'm driving down the street. They have a device that they put in the back of a car, and they pump the poison out, and uh, you're behind it, and you, you can't. They block you in. Uh, car in the front, car beside you, car behind you. Uh, but it hadn't worked because I've caught on to it. So, but anyway, I was being poisoned in Las Vegas in my condo. And uh, I was able to overcome that. As soon as I moved, I, I just loaded up on vitamins and what have you. Okay, I was asked a few moments ago before I came on board, the reason for the terrorist movement, by the way, the reason for the terrorist movement is they create these terrorist acts, the government does this covert operation, 
in order to hand establish the homeland security and in order to write the patriot act take away our constitutional rights and civil liberties there are prison camps that have already been set up there are railroad cars three tier railroad cars and i've seen them personally that have shackles in them i didn't see the shackles i saw the car and there are big plans for the next terrorist attack i think to pick up a bunch of us through the red blue and green list and haul us off to these concentration camps so okay now um, thank you very much I